So we are reading. We are reading from 2 Samuel chapter 12, from verse 9 to 16. 2 Samuel 12, 9 to 16, and it goes. Why have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You have taken his wife to be your wife, and you have killed him with the sword of the people of Ammon. Now therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house, because you have despised me, and you have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up ad adversity against you from your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this son. For you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel, before the son. So David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. However, because of this deed, you have, uh, you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also who is born to you shall surely die. Then Nathan departed to his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bore to David, and it became ill. David therefore pleaded with God for the child. And David fasted and went in and lay all night on the ground. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Wonderful Father. We have come into your presence. We are honored, we are privileged, we are blessed to be in your presence. We thank you for the access that we have to you, that you have given us access to you. God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, to stoop so low as to love people like us. You stooped down from your highest heaven and you took mud and you, and you molded mud, and you kissed that mud, and you poured the, 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 your spirit, the spirit of life, in, into sand. And here we are, living beings. You gave us access to you. From the lowest, you picked us up, and you made, made us like yourself. You say you created us in your image. Lord, we ask you to give us your heart today. Give us your mind today. Make us know that we are not mere human beings because your spirit lives in us. Open our ears, O oh Lord, the ears of our heart, the ears of understanding. Give us wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Give us the spirit of revelation so that we don't just hear what we are saying, but we will take it to heart and we will learn to live by it. Thank you, Father, for who you are and your plans and purposes for us, especially in these end times. Thank you, Father, for what you are doing for us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Yes, I welcome everyone to the presence of the Lord. And um, yes, it's a blessed thing to be in the presence of God. It's a very, very good thing to know the Lord and to worship him. Because Jesus said the Father is looking for such, those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And the time is now. Amen? Amen. The time is now. We need to, to, to open up to the Lord, to his presence, to his will and his plan. And so the title for our message today, if we listened to all that we read, Psalm 51 and 2 Samuel chapter 12, it says, create in me a clean heart. That's taken from Psalm 51 verse 10. Create in me a clean heart. 
If we don't have the mind of Christ, if we don't have the heart of Christ, we cannot claim to be Christ-like. We are here and we are children of God. And we have to do everything on a daily basis to learn to be more Christ-like. And, and for that reason, we need a heart transplant. Jesus says, Though that which is born of the flesh is of the flesh. That which is born of the spirit is of the spirit. God is spirit and we are his children. So we have to start to move away from the flesh mentality to the spirit mentality. Amen. So create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit. Give me a willing spirit to serve you. This is the topic of today. Create in me. Change me. Only you, God, can change me. Change me. Recreate me. Make me a different person from, from, from whom my mother knew, from whom my, my siblings knew, from whom my friends knew, from whom I even thought I was. Lord, I want to be Christ-like. I want to be you. Give me your heart. Create in me a clean heart. Last week we talked about that is why I came. So in this theme, Jesus is saying that is why I came. I, I, I'm happy you asked. I'm happy you asked because that's why I came. To show you the way. I gave myself up for you so that you can be me while I go back to being God. Who I, you know, I, because he came. He, he, he says, I'm the only one who came from there. Nobody knows the way there, on, except I take you there, you don't know. I'm the only way to the Father. Yes, sir. Others, like I just prayed, we all came from the mud. But he didn't come from the mud. He came from heaven. And he came to show us the way. And, then, and he said, when his disciples wanted him to stay, he said, no, guys. If I stay, it's not good for you. I have to go. Because you need to start to understand the real you know, sense of this whole business. You see me in the flesh, you want me to stay in the flesh, that's not good enough. You need to be spiritual. I will send the Holy Spirit so that you can learn to live in the spirit. Stop, live, stop looking at me in the flesh and wanting me to stay in the flesh. I want you to see me in the spirit the way I am. So I will come back in the spirit form and I will live in you so that wherever you are, I am there. You don't need to come to Jerusalem to see me. Wherever you are, I am there because I am spirit and I need you to start to learn to, to live in the spirit because that is the real thing. So today Jesus is using these uh, uh, readings that we had, the, the Psalm 51 and, and 2 Samuel, to start to, to open to us. Yes, we, we sin. Yes, we will fall into sin. But don't fall and stay fallen. My grace is there. That's why I came. He says there in, in Luke 4, 18, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he was reading Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has sent me to set the captives free. So where are you bound? Be it physical, be it mental, be it financial. However you feel bound, however you feel suppressed, however you feel oppressed, remember that is why he came. And, and today you want to say, okay, Lord Jesus, because you came, give me you. Create in me a clean heart. I want your heart. I want to know the things you know about me. Open me up. Create in me. Change my ways. Change my thought pattern. This is why you came. We are bound in sin, in self-condemnation. But today is that acceptable year of the Lord. Amen? Amen. This is that acceptable year. When I say year, it means minute, it means moment, it means month, it means week. 
Just take what falls into your basket. Today is the acceptable year of the Lord. Because the Lord has come to recreate you, to change you, to make you better. In whatever situation you might find yourself, just accept that Jesus came to set the captives free. He came to make us new. He makes all things new. So don't look at yourself with that old mentality of who you used to be. Remember Peter. We brought Peter up last week. When he, Jesus told him, you will deny me. He said, no, Lord, I can never do that. When he actually did, you can you imagine the, the level of self-condemnation that he felt? But Jesus said, no. I, I knew it before you did it. So don't go and kill yourself. Just come back to me and say, Lord, sorry, you said it, but I blew it. Amen. Here I am. Have mercy on me. Change me. Only you can change me. I acknowledge my sin. I know I've sinned against you and you alone. So I'm coming to you that you will have mercy on me. There is no pit so deep that the hands of Jesus is not even deeper. He created those pits. Amen. He created everything. So don't say, I have fallen. Oh, you know, I've, I've blown it forever. No, no. He, there's no forever with God. He is from eternity to eternity. Amen. All we need is to just go back and say, Lord, your blood has paid for this. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry that I didn't listen to you when you warned me. I'm sorry that I thought I could do it on my own. Just think of Peter. He, he was zealous. He wanted to fight and be there. I, we all want the same. Oh, I'll never leave Jesus. Jesus, I love you. I, I can never leave you. Uh-huh. When temptation comes, we have to remember that he's the one who says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. We have no strength. We have to go back to him and remind him, Lord, I have fallen, but you said Amen. that you will never leave me and you'll never forget, for, forsake me. So I'm coming back. I'm coming back upon your word. I'm standing upon your word. I'm coming back to you because of your word, because I know you are your word and your word can never be broken. Amen. Create in me a clean heart. That heart that failed, that piece of heart that, that failed to love you when I should have loved you. Lord, do a surgery on that heart. Recreate in me a clean heart. Change me, Lord, that I can truly be like you. And, and, and see, me, see me how you see me. See others how you see them. Because this is what causes offense. We start to, to, to preempt. What is he thinking? Uh -huh. He's looking at me somehow now. He, he think I ate that biscuit from Aldi. <laughs> but I paid for it. Why is she looking at me? No, they are not looking at you anyhow. Don't, don't put things in your mind. They look at you because you are the most beautiful girl in Aldi. They look at you because you are the most handsome man in Aldi. So just don't bother about when people look at you, say, hello, can I help you? That's right. You know, use the opportunity to preach Jesus to them. Amen. <laughs> so, so we have to, to just take God for who he says he is, not for who we think or who, who we imagine God is. Just let us be like children. You tell a child, you know, this is what it is. They can ask you two times. Uh, but why? But why? But why, mommy? But why, daddy? And you say, just because I said so. They will accept it. We need to be like children. Amen? We must come to him. We must trust him. We must accept him. And surrender, come under his authority. Because that's that submission. Don't try to tell God what he should do for you. When he's saying, this is what I want for you. Mm -hmm. Remember what he told David in what we read. Mm -hmm. he, I could have given you anything. 
Why did you go and despise me? When we sin, we sin against God. We sin against God. So we have to remember that he came to save us out of that ignorance. John 10.10 10 says, The enemy comes but to kill, to steal, to destroy. But I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. It is that abundant life that God wants for you. We have to settle it in our minds. In any how, any realm you see it. Even John says, Brethren, I pray that you would prosper even as your soul prosper. So every, every level, at every level, somebody said recently, healing in the church is God's second best. Because he didn't want you to be sick in the first place. It's sin that make, made you sick. You should always walk in health. Healing, and we jump about that second best. It's not even the best God wants for you. So we have to retrain our minds. Create in me a cleaner. Give me your heart. I want a heart transplant, Lord Jesus. I want your heart. Teach me to think like you. Teach me to love like you. You say I should love my enemy. How do, you, how do I manage that? It's only the way you love them. Teach me to love them the way you love them. Because you love. For God so loved the world. He didn't love Christians. He didn't love angels. He didn't love saints. He loved the world. That's everything. The, the bad, the beautiful, the ugly. All of it. The whole bundle. God loved the world. And gave himself. So that's what. And he, he says. As my heavenly father is perfect. So, also, so you must be perfect. How do you manage that without his heart? You can't manage it without his, his kind of heart. So he came to give us abundance in every area. Abundance of heart, abundance of love, abundance of joy, abundance of peace, abundance in anything that we, that we feel we lack. Jesus came and he came to bear our burden. He came to bear the punishment of our sins. He wants you to be free, guys. He wants us to be free. He came to bear the griefs. He came to carry our sorrows. That's why he's called man of sorrows. He bore it all for you and me. While we, like sheep, have gone astray, our iniquity was laid on him. He took all that beating for our own sin. We sinned and he suffered. Because he wants to show us the way. Don't dwell in that sin. I've taken care of it. You just come to me. Surrender under my authority. Let my blood come up, up, up uh, uh, unto you. Because that, that is the payment. Let that blood come over you. That is why we should understand the power of the blood. That blood that dripped from the body of Jesus, every drop of it, none of it should go unused because that was the price that he paid for us all. He wants us to be saved. He wants us to be happy. We have to understand how to make use of that, the power of that blood, the blood of Jesus. A lot of times, it is only pride that causes us to stumble. I, I know that. Oh, I can, even from childhood. You tell a child, let me tie your shoe because he has learned in the nursery how to lace his shoe. No, I'll do it myself. You, you teach him one day how to button his shirt. Next day you want to go, let me button your No, I can do it. And you stand there for two hours and they are trying to button one shirt. Something you could have done in two seconds. So he starts from day one. Start from day one. I can do it. That causes us to stumble. But the Lord is saying, yes, you may stumble. You are still my baby. Just reach out your hand. I'll catch you. It's not the end of the world when we stumble. We need a change of heart. We need...
to run to Jesus for repentance. We, you know, they say pride comes before a fall. We, we should not let that happen. There is a remedy. And today God is saying, I, I have come. I've come to, to recreate, in, to, to make you a new person. Let this word start to do surgery in us. Let this word start to wash us. Let this word start to, to, to do something new. Because what we cannot do, because it is an, it's a hard thing, a hard condition, an internal thing. We, we cannot see who we are in, in what until the light of the Holy Spirit exposes it. We don't know who we are. So we need to surrender. And, and, and this Psalm 51 that we read today is very powerful. I, I know it has happened in the past. You know, somebody comes for prayer and you say, let's read Psalm 51. What have I done? <laughs> you know, immediately they feel condemned because you say, let's read the prayer. What have I done? Already, you know. You no, know, you haven't done anything. As a matter of fact, when you read it, that word, if you, if you take time to read it, you see where God comes out. He, David is saying, God, open my lips that I can show forth your prayers. After he has created in him a clean heart, he now sees himself. He now sees a different person. Now he says, now open my lips that I may teach transgressors your ways. Mm -hmm. Because now he's flooded with light. It's like, oh my God, what did I do? Now I, now I have this revelation. I can go and teach others. And that's what we are all called to do. So the psalm is not just you, 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 what have you done? No. It's teaching us, you know, how to, to see us through the lenses of God. Because it, 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 that's all it's about. How God sees us. We, we, we condemn ourselves even before people condemn us. But God did not condemn us. It says, uh, verse 4 says, against you, you only have I sinned. So when we understand that we are dealing with God first hand, then we won't be so, so condemned. If we understand that Jesus actually paid the price for our sinfulness, for our wrongdoings, then we will not be quick to condemn ourselves. We will understand that, and that's why I talk about, you know, authority, authority in, in identity. When you know who you are, when you know that if, if no matter what I do, if I run back home, my dad will always open the door for me. That, that knowledge, that unbroken assurance that we know and we know if somebody already... No, see, it could have been easy for Jesus to be shot. One shot and he's dead. But look at what he went through. Every mocking, every scorning, every taunting, every spit... They spat on him, they pulled his beard, they mocked him, they kicked him, they, they beat him. And he was just there as if he didn't know what was going on. All for you, all for me. If only we can get it. When we go to God, it is to receive blessing. Because he is good all the time. So it is that ability to run to God and say, please lift this weight off my shoulders. I cannot, I cannot carry on with this weight. I, I, now you've revealed yourself to me. I want to, to serve you in freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I want to serve you with all my heart, without anything weighing me down. Lord, lift this weight from my shoulders. I need to worship you in peace, without anything weighing me down. Circumcise my heart. I need a new heart. I need a new mind. We, we read all the time, uh, you have the mind of Christ, you have the mind. We really need to know that we should have the mind of Christ. 
we need his heart, we need his mind. And, and that's what that, that, that uh, verse 10 of Psalm 51 says. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. What's a right spirit? The right spirit to lead me, that, and that's your thoughts. Your thoughts lead you, what you think, what you plan, what you decide, the decisions you make. Renew a steadfast spirit, a steadfast, a, a spirit that is steady, a willing spirit, the spirit that knows who we are. That mind of Christ, so that when I think, I, I learn to think right. When I look at people, I look at them right. I love them with the love of Jesus. It's, it's, not, it's not an overnight process. We have to put ourselves under that authority and say, create in me. Do a surgery on me every day I wake up. Teach me to be like you. If I'm supposed to be Christ-like, I'm called a Christian, let me be like Christ. And that's why I always say, I love Jesus for giving us the name of this ministry. So that we can always truly say, I am the living Jesus. I am the living, in this generation, I am Jesus walking the earth. I am the Jesus that is living in the flesh right now. I am the living Jesus. We, if we, because it's what we tell ourselves that comes to be. God says you are. So say, yes, Lord, I am. Don't start to doubt yourself. God says, I have given you my name. Go in my name. Amen. Whatever you do in my name is already done. Because it's me doing it. So this is you saying, I am Jesus. And then you are getting intimid intimidated. Because there's still too much flesh. We need to ascend. We need to transform into the spirit. That's why Jesus told the disciples, I need to go. So that you guys don't get too used to me in the flesh. You cannot get too used to the flesh. You need to get used to the spirit because that's who you are. We need a heart transplant. And Psalm 32 confirms that because he says, Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven. When your sins are purged, when you are forgiven, you are blessed automatically. So when you don't see yourself condemned, when you don't feel like people are condemning you, when you don't feel like you are constantly only a sinner and not a child of God, then you fail to receive. The, the blessing is not what we work for, guys. Jesus, you see, God already prepared Canaan for the children of Israel to go and, and inherit. Everything we have is an inheritance. It's not what we work for. The, the, the boundary lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. I have a good inheritance. That's Psalm 16. We inherit God's blessing. But because we don't know that we are sons, that we are heirs, we start to work for it. Once we have the, the heart of Jesus, once we have the mind of Christ, we know Jesus constantly said, I do what my father shows me. I do. He constantly. He never doubted himself. When we start to understand, I am Jesus. He has given me his name, the power that goes with that name, the authority that goes with that name. I am who Jesus says I am. That's why I say, you know, we need a complete different mindset. Create in me a pure heart, a clean heart, a heart like yours, a mind like yours. So that I don't remain in the place that the world wants me to remain. Do not be conformed, but be transformed by the renewal of the mind. When we know that we are forgiven, then we are more ready to receive blessing. Think of your children at home. They, they are naughty, they do something wrong. When they want to approach you, what do they do? They sneak up. Because they, they are not sure. Is daddy is, is going to accept me now? Is mommy going to accept me now? That's it. 
But when they didn't do anything wrong, they run to you, they jump on you, they, they do whatever they, they like. Because they feel free. The same, same way with God. If we feel condemned, then we are snaking around him. But when we know that he has forgiven us because of the blood of Jesus, because, not because we worked for it. That means accepting Jesus for who he says he is and for what he did for us. Then we can go to God boldly. And that's what David knew to do. He took Bathsheba, killed Uriah, and Nathan came with a parable. Mm -hmm. There was this rich man, and he had this poor neighbor. And you guys have to read that on your own. <laughs> Second Samuel chapter 12. And this rich man had everything he needed, and his poor neighbor had nothing, just one little ewe lamb. The man had a whole head, cows, goats, sheep, you know, name it. But this rich man had a visitor. Instead of him to take one of the many animals he had to kill and cook for the visitor, he went and took that little ewe lamb. And don't forget, this little ewe lamb was like a child to this poor man. It's the only thing he had. He used that, that thing used to eat from their plate and drink from their plate. It was, you know, a domestic animal. And this rich man went and took it and killed it. And David, having his big heart, said, that person must die. Uh-huh, really? Nathan is like, you are that man? <gasps> Immediately, I have sinned against the Lord. Straight up. He did not start to look for excuses why he did what he did. He did not say, oh, Nathan, what shall I do? No. Straight away he said, I have sinned against the Lord. Let us read it. Second Samuel chapter 12. Verse 13. Second Samuel 12, verse 13. So David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Because, see, the moment he spoke, the moment he recognized that it was him, the parable was about him, and he had already sentenced himself to death because he said that the person who did that thing must die. Because, see, we all want to do right. But we, we fall into sin now and then. But we need to understand we sin against a loving God. So immediately, he didn't even wait. Oh, Nathan, pray for me. No. Immediately, he said, I have sinned against the Lord. And because God saw his heart immediately, complete repentance, Listen to what Nathan said. Nathan didn't even go and consult the Lord. Immediately the Lord spoke. And Nathan said, The Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. Instantly, because he repented completely. You shall not die. Because he has already pronounced death on himself, isn't it? Yes. That man must die. But when he repented, God said, no, you shall not die because I see your heart. You have repented. This is how we need to do. This is the heart we need to have. And that's why he wrote that Psalm 51. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Help me to live right. I know I want to live right. But something is always, there's always this stumbling block. There's always this temptation. Lord, help me to live right. We can't do it on our own. You repent, God forgives. Even when you had cursed yourself, given yourself the death sentence. Once you repent, I don't care what your great-great-grandfather did, your great-great-grandmother. Yes, we carry this sin because we have not confessed, we have not repented. Remember what Daniel did? When he realized 70 years has come, he started praying. Because God said 70 years you'll be in captivity. When he started praying, he didn't say, uh -huh, God, I have been good. I've served all these kings. I've not eaten their 
idol food. I'm not, you know me, Abbe. No, no, no. He said, Lord, forgive us. Forgive my grandparents. Forgive our forefathers. He prayed for the, uh, for the sin of the nation. So he broke whatever curse had been there on their lives that was keeping them bound for 70 years. This is what we need to do. Don't, don't sin and stay there. We all sin. We all do wrong. Don't allow the, the pointing finger, the accuser of the brethren, to be on your case. Because somebody has laid down his blood for that. Somebody has paid the price for that iniquity already. We just have to acknowledge it and accept it and make use of it. The price has been paid. God wants the best for us. This is the end of the year. Okay? Just to round up. This is the end of the year. You know, every company, they have a budget for the year. So, and some people use their budget, some don't. But when you see that at the end of the year, everybody will try to use their budget up. Because if you don't use it, it's canceled and they'll give you less next year. So let us really release ourselves to God. Repent of our heart, because blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven. Every blessing that God has put in 2017 for us, we want it. Amen. That's why we, we, clean, we want to clean ourselves of any kind of self-condemnation. Or, or, or whether we have given ourselves a death sentence like David did. Let us repent and say, Lord, forgive me what I said about myself that time. Now I know better. Lord, forgive me. Everything you have for me, I want it. Because I know you want the best for me. It is his holy divine will that we want. Thank you, Jesus. To approach him, the only prerequisite is to un understand that order. God is holy, God is almighty, while we are not. And he is the one who died for us. And it is that blood that was shed that pays the price. We are sons, we are heirs, co-heirs with Christ. Yes. So we should not belittle ourselves. If God Almighty, the creator of all the earth and everything that is in it, says that you are co-heir, go and rule in my place. Go and reign in my place until I come back. Then that's what we should learn to do. It is just because our minds have not been programmed to think like that. And we need to start to think differently. Jesus says, whoever comes through the back door is a thief. I came through the front door. My sheep know me. He wants that relationship. They hear my voice. They know me. If I talk to them, they hear. So let us start to listen to the voice of Jesus and start to claim all the blessings that he has in store for us. We have to, to really, really understand his will for us, his plan for us, that, you know, we, we can be good. You know, you hear people say, oh, but I'm a good person. Good in whose standard? Mm -hmm. Whose standard? David was good. Remember all when he was younger? Oh, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He, when the Israelites mm -hmm. could not fight uh, Goliath, he went and fought because he was on fire for God. But sooner or later, sin crept in. So how good can we be? It's only God that can help us. Jesus is the sacrifice, the only sacrifice that satisfied God. That, that makes God look away from our sins. And Jesus paid that price. And that is why we need to come under his authority. I don't, I don't care how good you are. Even at, at our best, the Bible says we are like filthy rocks. At our very, 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 very best, we are still like filthy rocks. So people who say they are good, let them, you know, check the, the, the measurement again. Because it's only the precious blood of Jesus that cleanses, 
that turns black to white. It is the blood of Jesus. And we are privileged to have access to this blood. To so let us ask for, you know how when people are sick and they get blood, let us ask for the infusion, blood infusion today. Let us get blood infusion. Let us get a heart transplant. Let us ask God, Lord, we can do none of this on our own. We need your help. Holy Spirit, your name is helper, and we implore your help today. With love, with reverence, with, 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 uh, in obedience, in humility, we know you, you are our helper, and we need your help. We are not treating the Holy Spirit like a servant, no. We are asking for his supernatural power to help us out of where the world has put us, or of where tradition has put us, of where we have put ourselves, like David condemned himself. We, we say things and we laugh about it, but they are not laughing matters. So the more we know, the better off we are. So that we don't sneak around God and, and think, will he forgive me today? No, he has already forgiven you. You need to receive the forgiveness. Amen. So let us pray. Let us pray that God should do that work in us today. Because we have left our beds, we have left the comfort of our homes, we could still be in pajamas, stretching our feet up, but we left all that and we say, we know a place where I can feed free of charge. We know a place where while we are weak, we could be strengthened. Amen. We know a place while we are full of self-condemnation. Somebody will say, no, you are a prince, you are a princess. You are mine. I love you. I loved you before your mother even knew she was pregnant with you. I loved you while you were wallowing in sin and enjoying it. I loved you. Let us pray that God will give us a clean heart, a pure heart. And forgive us our sins and help us to forgive ourselves and to forgive others. Because he says there, you know, the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6 verse 12, forgive us our debts as we forgive those who, 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 uh, uh, who are indebted to us, as we forgive our debtors. So let us just search our heart for a moment. Search our heart and not go to God as slaves. Rather go to him as sons, as children, as co-heirs. Just holy people who have missed their way. Chosen people who have fallen by the wayside and we are just going back home. A royal priesthood, a chosen generation. Let us examine our hearts for a moment. Let us take time to say, God, create in me a clean heart and empower me so that I can go out there and preach the good news because that's what Jesus said he came for. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has sent me to bring good tidings to the poor. That's what Psalm 51 verse 15 says. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your prayers. And verse 13 says, Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. So the way God has found you and you have been converted, so tell him to open your heart, open your mouth, give you wisdom, understanding, the right words to speak to those who, were, who, who are where we once were because we were once like them. It is by the grace of God that we are who we are today. Father, we come to you by the power of your Holy Spirit in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for your love. 
We thank you for looking at us and recognizing that we were so helpless. And you sent your son. We sinned and you planned a way of escape for us. You gave us the remedy by the blood of Jesus. So that we can wash ourselves clean of every kind of iniquity. As long as we truly con repent in our hearts and confess with our mouth and run to you. If we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us. So Lord, today we confess our sins. We repent of our wrongdoings. And we say, blood of Jesus, wash us. Blood of Jesus, speak on our behalf. In this court, you are judge, you are jury, you are our lawyer, you are advocate, you are everything. Where we say we are guilty, your blood speaks not guilty. Thank you for not leaving us in the pit where we were. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that is always here, the ab your abiding presence, oh God. Holy Spirit, we ask you never to leave us, never to forsake us. Our hands are too weak to hold on to you. So we say, hold on to us. We tie your word around us. Your word says, you will never leave us, you will never forsake us. And we take that upon ourselves. Mm -hmm. We clean ourselves, we shower ourselves, we take that blood bath. And we say, renew us, change us, create in us a clean heart of God. And renew a true and right spirit, a steadfast spirit within us so that we can live that life that you sent us into this world. The same way you came, that is how you have sent us. Help us to be like you. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen.